Hello and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today we're going to continue going forward with our videos in the ministry in reference to a revelation entitled The Wicked. Okay, The Wicked. And the uh, psalm that I'm first led to is Psalm 92. And it speaks of uh, the wicked. And it says, it is good, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon a psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, O Lord, has made me glad through thy work, and I will triumph in the works of thy hands. Hallelujah. O Lord, how great are thy works. And the thoughts are very thought, are, and your thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knows not, neither does a fool understand. And verse 7 is the actual verse that I'm drawn to and led to in reference to uh, this revelation in, uh, entitled The Wicked. It says, When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. And so let me repeat that again. When the wicked spring as the grass and when all the workers of iniquity are flourishing, it is because they shall be destroyed forever. God is placing them, allowing them to flourish so that they can, so that he could destroy them all at one time. But thou, O Lord, art most high forevermore. For thine enemies, O Lord, for thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Now that is to the saint, to the individual that is a part of the kingdom of God. Okay, not to the wicked because they don't want to submit to God. Verse 11, mine eye also shall see my desire upon my enemies. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, and he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts <clears throat> of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing. To show that the Lord is upright, and he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. All right, so I wanted to go ahead and just read that whole psalm, but the verse that actually applies to us for this revelation, because it all applies to us, okay, because it's from the heavens, and we it's uh, good for revelation, uh, encouragement, edification, and all of the above. But the verse that, again, applies to uh, the revelation that we're taking a look at today entitled The Wicked, we want verse 7 where the uh, word tells us that, <clears throat> again, when the wicked spring as the grass and when all the workers of iniquity are flourishing, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. Okay, So they will be wiped out completely and God will allow that for them to flourish and to uh, be mighty in whatever work that is there, whatever it is they're doing but then uh, setting themselves up for destruction in the end, okay? Because God sees all of their wicked devices. So I'm led over into Jeremiah chapter 12 for this Revelation reading. And it begins with, Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet let me walk, let me talk with you of thy judgments. Wherefore does the way of the wicked prosper? So he asked the question, Jeremiah asks, how does the wicked prosper? And how are they all happy that deal very treacherously, okay? Uh, you know, and they're doing this evil. How are they becoming so happy with, you know, and <laughs> with it? But nevertheless, he says, thou has planted them. Yes, they have taken root. They grow. Yes, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and are far from their hearts, okay? Now, again, this is a speaking of uh, people in the kingdom of heaven, those that have been converted, even though I'm reading an Old Testament revelation reading book of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah is having a conversation with God. 
It also can apply to us today in the kingdom as new saints in the kingdom for those that once have been converted, okay, and but they have uh, somehow been led astray. Because nevertheless, look what the reader says. Thou hast planted them. Yes, they have taken root. They grow. Yes, they bring forth fruit. But thou art near in their mouth and far from their heart. And he says, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried my heart toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. For long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. The beasts are consumed and the birds because they said he shall not see our last end. Okay, thinking that God does not see them. So if thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? For even thy brothers and the house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously with you. Yes, they have called a multitude after you. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto you. And then he goes on to say, I have forsaken my house. Now, this is, uh, again, Ezekiel speaking. Uh, we are in the, Not Ezekiel, I'm sorry. We're in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah being spoken to by God. And then he goes on to say here, verse 7, I have forsaken my house. I have left my heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. Now, that's God saying this. And my heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It cries out against me, and therefore have I hated it. What? He began to hate his own heritage. My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. And then he says, many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They've trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They've made it desolate, and being desolate, it is crying unto me. The whole land is made desolate because no man takes it to heart, okay? They're not considering what is being done. The spoilers are come up upon all high places through the wilderness, for the sword of the Lord shall devour from them one end of the land, even to the other end of the land, and no flesh shall have peace. And then he goes on to say, they have sown wheat, but shall reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of your revenues because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Okay, as the Lord begins to go forward with his anger upon those that have become wicked in his kingdom. Because that's what we're speaking of. Those that have uh, somehow drifted away from the will of God and they're doing their own thing and they become wicked and doing their own thing. And instead of them um, being righteous, they become the wicked. And he says, uh, verse 12, the spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness for the sword of the Lord shall devour from, from the one end of the land, even to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace for they've sown wheat, but shall reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of your revenues because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus says the Lord against all, all my evil neighbors, okay, that touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. Now, at the beginning of this verse, he says uh, to the people, my evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Now, that's a spirit like Jezebel, because, again, we have did some Bible studies and look, had some revelations on uh, the spirit of Jezebel and how that spirit operates and the fact that it messes with, bothers the inheritance of the God, okay, of God, of the children of the saints of God in the kingdom. That is the ultimate uh, device of the spirit of Jezebel, among uh, many other things. But the main ultimate device of that spirit is it takes over the inheritance. Whatever a saint 
has as an inheritance, the Jezebel spirit does not want that individual to receive that. Okay, and that's whatever kind of gifts or to operate in that gift and where they give glory because see, with them receiving the gift that the Heavenly Father has uh, destined for them to have, they glorify heaven. Okay, and that's what the Jezebel spirit does not ever want God to have is glory. In the name of Christ Jesus, hallelujah, Heavenly Father, we're going to always petition you every time I mention Jezebel's spirit. We're going to petition heaven on behalf of that spirit and ask for the Heavenly Father to continually release his anointing to break every yoke of the Jezebel spirit that tries to hoover and operate over the kingdom, the saints of God in the earth today. Oh, Heavenly Father, come mightily with your anointing. Release it in Jesus Christ's mighty name upon that spirit and remove it out of our lives. Let it wreak no havoc. Let anything that it has done, let it not be effective in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Because that is a horrible spirit. And again, the reason for its operation is to stop the kingdom of heaven from giving glory to the heavenly father. Because as we receive, we give glory. We all, you know, we, that is glorifying God. Because his, what his purpose and his plan and his will is in the earth is being established, is going forward. So whenever it stops, if whenever it stops or is the de, um, delayed, someone tries to detour it, then they're stopping the glory of God. And may God always intervene and do something about that in Jesus Christ's mighty, powerful name. Because again, it, it's stopping his glory. Vindication, oh heavenly father, is needed always in Jesus Christ's name on behalf of that Jezebel spirit. Okay, so then uh, verse 15, he says, And it shall come to pass, after that I pluck them out, I will return and have compassion on them and will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. And it shall come to pass if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name. The Lord lives as they taught my people to swear by Baal. Then shall they be built in the midst of my people. But if they will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, says the Lord. Okay. So, you know, in looking at what we just read in reference to the wicked, we saw that the pastors have destroyed my vineyard. God says here in verse 10. And they've trodden my portion underfoot, and they have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Which was another reason for uh, God going forward, as he said he was going to do, in reference to how the children of Israel were being mistreated by the wicked. Okay, Those that were once a part of the kingdom, or are still are, Okay, because again, we saw in verse two, thou hast planted them. Yes, they have taken root and they have been growing from that root and they bring forth fruit. But you, O oh Lord, he tells them, you are near in their mouth and you are far from their hearts because they're not serving you in their heart. They're serving themselves from them, from their heart. And that is what the wicked is uh, in the earth. Once an individual has been converted into the kingdom. They have been uh, chosen by God, placed in the kingdom to bring forth and to serve his will in the earth. And if they begin to serve anything other than his will and God in the earth, then they have become defiled and uh, known out of the word of God as a wicked individual. Okay. All right. So that's going to conclude the revelation uh, reading for the wicked that we were taking a look at reference to an individual uh, becoming wicked once they have been converted into the kingdom. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go store forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.